Hi everyone, welcome back for another Geared Up Garage video. I'm Jay, and this one, we're gonna be talking about that, and whether or not you should buy one. So, behind me we have my two litre TFSI Audi TT 8J. Now before we get into the running costs and things like that, and what it's like to daily drive this car, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a history lesson. So, history Jay, take it away. Hello, and welcome to the History Garage, with me, History J. So we're going to start off in 1998 and in 1998 Audi produced the Mark 1 TT to the world. This was at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Now it did very well at the, at the Motor Show and produced lots of interest. Audi claimed it had a top speed of 112 mile an hour which they thought was pretty good at the time. It then went on a couple of years later in 2000 to be nominated for the North American Car of the Year award from which a lot of publicity was good. I believe Top Gear as well, um, at the time Top Gear magazine, it was in their top 10 cars. It did very well, it was a fantastic car. However, in 2004, August of 2004, Audi released a statement saying they were working on the next generation of car. It was going to be Mark II, 8J, the big boy, the one and only. So, how is this car different to its predecessor? Well, for a start off, it's quicker. The previous car had a top speed of 112 miles an hour, although it does 155 miles an hour. I don't know if this specific one will still do it. She's been around a bit. She's been around since 2007, so she's probably lost a few horses. They probably galloped away to a better field beyond. So that's one of the ways that this car is better. So what happened to the car? Where did it go? How did it do? So to start off, the car did very, very well. It sold well, commercially, fantastically, um, and Audi, it was Audi's, one of Audi's flagship sports cars for many, many years. And in 2007, won a Gran Turismo award as well. So she had her fair share in the limelight, again, much like the predecessor, also being quick, they had the other models of the car as well. This isn't slow, this is what I like to call a peasant spec model. This is the base model, this is a two litre turbo petrol. You had the TTS, which had 268 brake horsepower, which is 68 more than this one. And then you had the TTRS, which had 335 brake horsepower, which is 135 more than this one. Absolutely incredible cars, I'm sure, in their own right. I'd love to drag race this against the TTRS. And maybe we'll do a build one day where we can get this quicker than a TTRS. I don't think we'll get it quicker than an R8. As a screaming V10 would put most things down. What happened to the car? Where did it go? Well, in short, the world moved on. Technology moved on and cars were moving on. Audi decided in order to keep up its image and keep on the cutting edge of things, it should probably bench this little guy and so replaced it with the Mark III. This was released in 2014 and has gone on to do quite well. It's also the current generation of Audi. I'm not gonna to go too much into that as we come to the end of this little history lesson here. I hope you guys have enjoyed your time with me and unfortunately, I have to hand you back to the other Jay now. So, thank you for joining History Garage. <laughs>First of all, let's start with the all important figures, shall we? So with a top speed of 155 mile an hour and 200 brake horsepower, you'd like to think that it shifts a fair amount and that it does. It also, in addition to this as well, come on mate, where are you going? Take your time. It's miles per gallon uh, figure isn't too bad either. So Audi say that it will do 45 miles to the gallon. And while to be fair for the main and average driver, that's probably true. For me, however, not so much. I mean, I probably, I've got a semi-heavy right foot. Um, I do enjoy to put this car through its paces sometimes. And I must say on average, I don't get 45 miles to the gallon. I get 35, 33, probably around that figure there. So I think on motorway miles, if you're gonna drive it respectively, you know, you're gonna stick to 65, 70 mile an hour as you should, then you'll probably get 45 miles um, to the gallon fairly easily. Um, you know, it's a very comfortable car. You can do an awful lot with it. Um, it's a very practical car. If you're used to hatchbacks and things like that, 
then you won't actually feel too much out of place in this car. It's not like a Grand Tourer, it's not particularly um, it's not particularly long, and it's not particularly powerful either. It's enough to put a smile on your face and you'll get a bit of poke out of it, but not enough to really cause you any, or put you in any real danger unless you're driving like an absolute looney tune. So, it's one of the main positives about this car is that it's fairly livable and very practical. Um, you can take it to the shops and everything else. The boot is a great size. Uh, it's, yeah, you wouldn't be able to get kids in here, um, not unless they were babies, and in that case, I still wouldn't recommend putting anyone in the back of this thing. How do you say it's a four-seater car? Yeah, right, uh, it's a two-seater car. If you're gonna buy this car, you're gonna buy it for, for you, and probably a partner, I'm guessing, or a friend. Uh, if you wanna go on a road trip or have it for the summer and enjoy the car, it's fantastic for that. Anything else, no, I wouldn't be doing that. Um, I wouldn't be buying it as a family car or anything like that. You're never gonna get four people in the back of this car. Um, or in the back, well, you're never gonna get four people in this car. Um, you might be able to fit a couple of bodies in the boot, but you know. <laughs> so yeah, in terms of practicality, it's a great car. In terms of its running costs, I would say I probably do. I'm a, I do probably about 100 miles a week, uh, if that. Uh, I don't do a lot at all. I probably actually, to be fair, I do probably a, le a lot less than 100 miles a week. I probably only do about 50 miles a week in this car, um, and you'll get about 300, 400 miles um, to a tank. You can get up to 405 out of this. I've had 405 miles out of this car when I was driving extremely economically, um, and so yeah, it's more than doable. Uh, I'd probably say on average you're probably going to get about 380, um, 300 and. Yeah, 380 miles out of this car on a full tank. Uh, so, you know, fairly practical in that sense. Uh, in terms of a drivability standpoint, so as we discussed previously, the car being fairly low to the ground as standard um, does make it a lot nicer to drive. Uh, you can throw this car into the corners uh, and it will come out the other side just fine. You'll feel every curve in the road. Uh, it's a very, very driver focused car. If you're looking for something that's not going to knock you off your seat, but is going to give you a little bit of a sense of a thrill, this car is perfect for you. Um, in terms of how much uh, of a thrill, well, that obviously depends on what sort of cars you're used to and things like that. As I say, if you're coming from a Focus or a Fiesta and you sit there and think, oh, you know what, I really fancy something a little bit sporty, something that's going to you know, get me through the summer and it's going to have a load of fun with, definitely go get yourself an Audi TT. Over competitors like the BMW Z4, it's definitely up there and it's definitely a better car to have. I strongly recommend it. I like the Z4, it's a great car, but with the creature comforts and stuff like that that you get with the Audi, you're better off going with the Audi. Speaking of the creature comforts, let's pull over now and have a look and see what this car comes equipped with. And so there are many creature comforts in the Audi. Uh, we have transitioned from driving to now stopped uh, so I can show you guys what the interior of the cabin's like, and then we'll head back out on the road. So first things first, you can expect in the Audi TT heated seats. So as you can see over there, you've got all of your climate control buttons there. Um, lovely little light up dials actually. For a car of the for its age, it's very very high tech to be fair. Um, yeah, you've got normal AC stuff like that. This doesn't come as standard. Uh, this is something that I've added in very cheaply from eBay, as we can see. Uh, Six-speed manual gearbox, push down to select reverse. Um, Hads and switches there, and you can control whether or not you want to um, have your spoiler up or down. Obviously, I have it up all the time because I'm a chav. Um, well, racer boy, actually. I'm not a chav, I'm a racer boy. Um, there's a big, big difference, by the way. Um, obviously, the stereo is not standard. This is an Xtrons unit that I fitted. I will just put out there now and just say, do not buy an Xtrons unit. Just spend the money and get a proper unit put in. These are not very good at all. Um, I've had nothing but grief and issues with this. Although it does a job, it's still not ideal. It doesn't do all the things it says it should do, and it doesn't talk to my phone because it's out of date. So, yeah, there is that. You also get, in addition, uh, you can get aftermarket uh, footwell lights in this as well. Apologies for the state of my footwell. It has been raining. So, yeah, um, you can fit those. They're very easy. Um, they are actually very good. So, um, yeah, I'd say you get what you pay for, but I didn't pay a lot for those, so... There you go. Other than that, you can get a creaky glove box if you really want one. They, you can, I don't know if they come as standard or whether or not that develops over time. 
In terms of any issues on the inside of the car that you should be aware of, condensation. Uh, these love to fog up for some reason. I don't know why the windscreens are really bad for fogging, especially in the, the down uh, points where the windscreen joins the bonnet. As well, uh, over in these parts here in the doors, um, they fog up as well. The back window is a nightmare. If you're one thing I would say that's quite annoying when you're driving along is that there is no A, no windscreen wiper at the back. So once it gets wet, that's it, you can't see. And B, it becomes a van at night time. So you, you won't be seeing out the back of that window at night. Driving at night, you, you'll be using your mirrors. It won't uh, won't be particularly visible. So other than that, uh, that's the interior of the car. Back out to the road. Okay, so we're now back out on the road and we're, I'm not gonna lie, we're thrashing the gears a little bit. I say thrashing, we're lingering in the gears because in a terms of a more uh, drivability focus, a more performance point of this car, you are gonna need to be lingering around in three to 4,000 RPM to get anything kind of fun out of this car. In the terms of, is it gonna put you back in your seat? As I previously said, no, it's not gonna do that. You're not gonna launch to 60 particularly quickly. However, if you are going through the country roads like we are doing now, then you can, um, you can stick in third and you can go around the chicanes and the tight bends and things like that. And you will have a bit of fun with it. You will, it will put a smile on your face. I'm having to drive quite conservatively as I'm coming through um, my home village at the moment. But when we get out onto the, uh, onto some more twisty windy roads, I will put it through its paces a little bit more, never breaking the speed limit. And that is one thing I will say about this car that I do just want to bring up is on the performance front of it, you do not have to drive this car fast to, to get an enjoyment out of it. You can drive it very reasonably. You at 40, 35 mile an hour, 40 mile an hour, if you get your gear changes right, if you drive the car properly, as I say, it's a driver focused car. If you drive it properly, there will be no need to go ridiculously fast or break any speed limits at all. You can have a lot of fun just by driving this car, just by learning how to drive this car. It's a fantastic car. The throws on the gear shifts are excellent. Um, it will put a smile on your face, no doubt. Um, it doesn't take very long to get uh, to get up to speed with either. It's a very easily driven car. You can drive it fantastically easy. I would recommend it over the automatic. Get definitely get the manual over the automatic because if you are a driver focused, if you are driver focused and you do you want this as your second car or as a sporty car, definitely get the manual. You'll more than likely want that. You'll want to feel those gear throws, as I say, as we come out of here now you really can just have quite a bit of fun with it. And, and the turbo whistle as well on it. I mean, it's raining at the moment, so, but I will just pull the window down slightly just so we can listen to that turbo whistle up. I've got no induction kit, anything like that on this car. So we're gonna come for a chicane here in third gear and just, you know, you really can just have a bit of fun with it without going particularly quick at all. I didn't even break the speed limit there. So, <laughs> like I ever ever broke with the speed limit before. <clears throat> no, I've never done that. <laughs> but you can, you know, you, you can genuinely have fun with this car and it's a fantastic car. And from a pricing point as well, you know, <laughs> you can't go wrong. I mean, realistically, what you should be, you know, at the, currently, this is the end of 2022. You should be paying for a, a one point or for a two litre turbocharged petrol i paid two grand for it i think that was pretty cheap i think you could pick it up for about three four grand and that would be perfectly reasonable anything more than that tts would probably set you back about six or seven grand and then rs probably about 14 13 14 grand but in terms of you know a little summer car you cannot go wrong i highly recommend getting some this things car. i would improve on this car and i either will be improving as i said for there um either will be improving is that really rattly glove box. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a common thing on this car. I've looked on the forums. I can't really see anything, so it must just be my car. But since I've had this, my glove box will not stop rattling. All it does all day long is just rattle, 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 rattle. So I don't know. It, it must just be it must just be me. If anyone else has had a glove box that's extremely rattly, please let me know in the comments below um, and how you stopped it rattling or if it just continues to do your head in as it does mine. So uh, yeah, 
that's essentially everything you need to know about the TT. A couple of little common problems as we've discussed before, but on the whole, a very, very fun, drivable, livable car. It's not gonna set the world on fire, but it might just make yours a little bit better. Here we go. Right, let's return home and discuss the verdict on this car. I think you guys know already what it's gonna be. So, should you go and buy this car? Well, for the money you're probably gonna spend on one or something of similar value, I would say, yeah. I mean, I paid 2,000 pounds for this car. It's 15 years old. Okay, it creaks a little bit, but it puts a smile on your face. It's a driver's car. You're gonna feel every curvature in the road and it's gonna put a smile on that face of yours. Go buy one. What are you doing? Why are you even still watching this video? Go! Click the like button, click the subscribe button and go buy this car. I've been Jay.